Still to come, I'm celebrating the great British sausage, and there'll be more from my guests, Atul Kutcher and Rick Astley. Uh, but first, put your hands together. Strictly Come Dances, Craig Rubble Hall, with a silly Now, one of your favourite fish is Dover Soul. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I like it. So I'm going to do a, I'm doing a fish finger sandwich for you. That's oh, all right. Yeah. Using some Dover Soul. Oh, it's lovely. Beautiful bit of fish. But first, I'm going to skin this. But but first of all, I wanted to congratulate you on a on a career because not many people and talk to you about your career. No, they, they jumped don't. straight to Strictly, and I'm thinking well, yeah. you've got such an amazing career. I know. Well, that Strictly, you have to remember. Obviously, you know, is my Saturday job. Yeah. And that's for only three months of the year, where I hold paddles from one to four, generally. Yeah. I mean, I know I do have tennis in there somewhere, <laughs> but um, yeah. there's a lot more to me than that, of course. There is. And, well, even just getting the job, you know, it was the, the reason I got the job was because I was directing and choreographing a musical in town. And... You uh, uh, just a musical? Go on. Yeah. What musical? Oh, no, there was... I've done millions of them. Yeah. Sunset Boulevard's being one of them, one of yeah. my favourite ones, I yeah. have to say. I was looking after West Side Story, the original production of that, for four years anyway. Uh, but uh, but before so that, many. before that, a fascinating thing, so before that, in, as, in Paris, yeah. the leader... Oh, yeah, I was dancing at the leader. That's why I left Australia, cos I have no uh, Australian accent left. Right. I don't <laughs> know why. I, someone asked me that question the other day. And I never really noticed when my uh, Australian accent left me. You know, it, was, it wasn't um, by choice. I think it just happened that I was living with people at a shared accommodation, like most people do, because London was so expensive, yeah. of course, back in the 90s then, and is now, of course, you know, that we had to live with six other people. Just this is to, to make it work. Skin, by the way. You yeah, pull it that's the up. best way of doing it. Yeah, and then you can yeah. then basically just... Pan fry that, and then that's your yeah. Dover Solman, yeah. Look but how beautiful that looks. So. It is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. But then when, when you made the move from... Well, then, quite young to go, move from Australia. Yeah, to, I, did you go to France straight away, or...? I went to Paris immediately, and that was to work in a G-string with a big blue fish on my head. <laughs> Which I loved, and because, <laughs> because my body was really, <laughs> my body was really good at the time. So I thought, because I was in a, uh, a show called Ladies' Night, right? Uh, well, it was called Starkers in Australia. Then it became Ladies' Night, and that yeah. ended up being the Full Monty. So I thought, well, why not use this amazing body that I've discovered, yeah, uh, and and go and dance at the Lido in Paris, you know, in a g-string. So I did, and of course that led to me auditioning for Cats. The right. musical, and then I got that show. So I did Cats, and then went into Miss Saigon, of course, and uh, did loads of uh, West End shows up until uh, 1993, where I was in a show called Crazy For You, and that was my last show. And I thought, at 30, I was really pushing it. I felt really old because I was dancing next to 16-year-olds, of course. Yeah. You know, at auditions, and I felt because like I, a, I, I, I felt mean, like an old man. I know. First, <laughs> it takes it out on you that people don't yeah. realise the amount of work. I mean, you guys put a lot more than what I did when I did Strictly, but it just—I mean, physically, yeah. it's just relentless. You're like a racehorse, yeah. you know, and or a footballer. You, you, your career is only going to span, you know, that long. It's a limited amount of time that you yeah. can dance. So I thought I didn't want that to sort of happen to me and I wanted to remain in the industry. So I thought, right, I think I'm going to go down the choreographic route. So I did that. And then that became quite successful. I was having too many fights with directors, so I decided I'm going to direct <laughs> things myself right. now and choreograph. Why were you having fights uh, with directors, Craig? Was well, it... We just sometimes didn't see eye to eye. Okay, right. That's sort of it. I'm quite opinionated. I don't know what you It's unheard know. of, you know, <laughs> this, this day. But, I, um, you know, I just wanted to have uh, control of the whole... Uh, show. Yeah. So that's what I worked towards. And then it was because of that, and uh, not fame, but uh, people knew of me in the industry, and I was doing quite well in the industry in that way. And yeah. uh, that's when the BBC got hold of me and said, Will I come in and have a screen test for this new dance show they're doing with celebrities called Strictly Come Dancing? And I said, Well, what does it entail? And they said, Oh, uh, a celebrity will have to uh, learn to dance, you know, with a professional, and then they dance in front live on the TV. Yeah. I said that sounds like car crash <laughs> to me. Car crash TV. I said absolutely not. It sounds appalling. I said there's no way any celebrity that has never danced before could possibly compete or come in with someone that has been training since there were three. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's. Physically impossible, and I said it's just going to be uh, awful. But but anybody would do basic steps. How but you changed. proved me wrong? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know whether I proved you wrong. <laughs> no, I think I proved you right, no, to be honest. The funny thing was, I was watching a little TV monitor. This was the audition. I decided to finally go and have this audition in my lunch break, 
And I went up to the Beeb and uh, they put a little screen there and there's some pretend tests and a pretend juicy and some pretend, you know, uh, dancers and stuff. Yeah. And then they showed me a monitor of uh, all the people that they'd employed dancing and I was watching this and I had to comment on it. So, of course, I've got a little notepad and I was writing down little notes and then they said, well, what did you think of that particular dance? I said, well... Whoever that woman is, darling, can't even walk down the stairs, let alone get onto the dance floor. And it was awful. I said, whoever the professional is has got the boldest legs I've ever seen. You could drive a semi-trailer through the middle of them. And I said, how that as a professional dancer is beyond me. And, of course, the two people I was talking about was Natasha Kaplinsky and Brendan Cole. They went on to win that... Went on to win it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so how wrong was I? But, you, but you're, uh, you're a great... I mean, you, I'm going to stop you there, because you're a great storyteller, and all this is relevant, because you're about to tell those stories... Yeah. ..on, on tour. You're about I to... You're... I'm doing the brave thing, James, and going out alone, all by my lonesome, and I'm calling it the All Balls and Glitter Tour. Right. And... In which I will tell stories, obviously. I will have a Q&A, like most this is no, this, You're not going to have these things... These... I'm not having any of that. No, I'm going to... These open just it. random pictures just keep As going As a on. woman, I think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to introduce... I'm going to introduce Craig Revel Hallwood and interview him myself. But it will be um, not the real one, because the real one will be me right. in drag. But um, there's a lot of... Um, <laughs> There's a lot going on in the show, where I sing, I'll dance, I'll do a bit of acting. So, in that brave going out on your own, because, yes. you know, you're, you're with the comfort, we're doing what you're doing, you've got a comfort of four of you. Yeah, it's lovely. But, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a bit of a sing and uh, telling the story of my life, really, that a lot of people don't know about. And I think it'll be good fun as well for the audience to see me in a completely different light. Well, because, to see me how I am as a performer. Th I've known you for a long, long time. Yeah. People see you on a Saturday, see you... But you do an awful, awful lot of work off-screen. Yeah. And, and, and doing stuff on stage in bits and pieces. People yeah. say, I mean, Panto. Yeah, you Panto, do that every I'm doing... Year. Every year, I've been doing that for 11 years now. That, I mean, that and was... I've enjoyed it. And that was... I, I had a break of 16 years before I went back on the boards, cos I... I I'd really given up performing my whole life. You know, I decided that I would not do that. But then I was offered Panto, and, uh, and I decided to go back on. And thank, thank goodness, actually, because it was... It really woke me up to the fact that I actually missed it and loved it. Yeah. Loved performing, and especially getting to play villainous characters now. But it must be like the stage that you're doing, because the stage at the West End was relentless. I mean, it yeah, must be... That was, well, that was eight shows a week. Panto is 12 shows a week, and yeah. an absolute killer. And, of course, I have Saturdays free uh, to do Strictly at the same time, so I'll be travelling backwards and forwards. And, yeah, it's, um, it hurts, <laughs> yeah. you know, to do two shows yeah. a day. But um, I really love it. And I've done... You know, I've also done feature films as well. I did Nativity Rocks, which uh, came out last year at Christmas, where I played the villain. And I get such um, joy out of doing that. I really loved doing that movie. It was just brilliant. But like I, I said to you at the beginning of this, people, people don't know about this sort of stuff. And that's what's going to make the, the tour of you going around and telling those stories. Yeah, quite, I can't wait. Because people don't... People only know... Like... Well, they might, Five actually, percent of you. James, they might actually learn to like me instead of, you know, being the most hated person in, the, in Britain. Yeah. Well, I don't know where you Come are. On. <laughs> my heart, darling, my <laughs> heart. You know, you know Mary Rose sauce? You know that Mary Rose, yeah. that classic sauce? Well, yeah, most people think it's ketchup and mayonnaise. The way I would make it is this. So we, we take a combination of... This is mayonnaise, ketchup... So you get the colour. Yeah. A little bit of that. And there's sugar in that as well, isn't there? Cayenne. Cayenne pepper. Oh. That's nice. Brandy. Oh. Yeah. Yes, brandy. brandy. Yeah, not, maybe not so much brandy, but just a little bit of brandy. No, that gives it the flavour, doesn't it? Yeah. Just a touch of brandy and a little bit of lemon juice. That sounds good. And that's your basically simple little Mary Rose sauce. And then you can take your nice little Mary Rose sauce, which you've got there, Grab yourself a spoon. In here, we've got a combination of just different lettuces. I've got a nice little bit of watercress, mm. as you know, because you live around about Hampshire anyway. We've got this lovely little watercress around here as well. Yeah, we do. How are you finding that moving down from I the city? Because you spent 30 years in the city. Yeah, in Camden Town. You yeah. can imagine where my front door was a metre from the pavement. So right. uh, moving to Hampshire was possibly one of the best things I ever did. And I 
took to it like a duck to water. However, I was really nervous because there were no street lamps, there was no noise. <laughs> the only thing you can is, you hear is your heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, I didn't want to go outside the house. I was a bit scared of the dark. Is that pathetic? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> is that actually pathetic? <laughs> but I sort of was, because I, in Camden Town, of course, you can't get rid of the lamps, you know, you yeah. can't, and the noise, of yeah. course, when I used to stay there. So I ran both properties for four years, but then um, I was never spending any time in London at all. Any time I could... Uh, you know, get back home, I would. Well, and Craig, it's just driving it, down the driveway. Craig, it's great to it's have like, you in this oh, neck of the woods. It's great, I love it. I'm only 25 minutes from your house, and now I know where you live, darling. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going to badger you. Exactly. I'm not going to leave you alone. Oh, right. In fact, I might even invite you over to mine. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Well, I've got my own cooking show now, darling. Okay. Well, a thread, yeah, on the rain. I do that. So I'm, I'm up for you the mean challenge. You mean you just turn up and guest on the rain? But it's hardly your own cooking show, no, Craig, is it? It sort of is. It came out of my house. <laughs> anyway, look, they're all no, at it's, it. So, it's not my own cooking show. So film. you're about to see this dish on Lorraine in about two months' time, cooked by Craig Revel Horwood. That's they, right. So you've got... I'll just change it slightly. I'll <laughs> change the breadcrumbs a bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you've got... <laughs> Most chefs do anyway, right. Yeah. So, you've got, so you've got dough with sole, uh, goujons with a nice little mayo sauce, bit of watercress on a brioche bun. Easy as Delicious. That. Bravo. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Bon appetit. Oh, thank you. You might want to just pick a pick pick one of these goujons off, but oh, look. yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit of lettuce. Mmm. <laughs> 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 mm. Maybe learn. I think I bit off more than I could yeah, chew. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so nice. I'm gonna finish them. Happy with that? Mmm, I love it. Mm. It's the other sauce is wonderful, isn't it? And it's literally just mm. on the road. It's absolutely fantastic fish. You can get all of it. Uh, and there'll be more from Craig in just a few minutes, but don't go anywhere, because after the break, we'll find out how to make award-winning sausages. Mm. I'll see you in a bit. No comment. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>